Day one, we are shown some prisoners in a cell. Everything seems to be going as usual, but just then, one of the men starts coughing up blood profusely. It is now day seven, and all the men in the cell start dying one by one due to the unknown virus. By the end of the month, thousands of men have died, and they are mass buried by women, who for some reason are unaffected by the virus. Eight years later, the viral plague has wiped out all of the men, and Earth has become a planet run by and for women. With no men around, the women have set up a repopulation lottery, which is run by an organization called Wellness. It is a robust and just process for selecting women who get to deliver a healthy future. To keep the Earth's population stable, they allocate sperm from the world's pre-virus sperm banks. In New Zealand, a lucky woman named Jamie is selected out of hundreds of participants. She runs a dairy farm with her friend Pip and sister-in-law, Alex. Jamie used to have a son and loving husband, Jackson, before she lost them during the plague. Jamie's friend, Pip, works for the wellness organization, while Alex is an outspoken critic of the organization. The latter has been sent to jail numerous times for attacking and cursing Lane, the wellness organization's leader. In fact, she has been to jail so many times that she has even managed to have a romantic affair with her parole officer, Constance. Whenever Alex is sent back home from jail, the police inject a bliss ball in her body that keeps her temporarily sedated and under control. One day, when Alex returns home from jail, she wakes up to an empty home. As she is heavily sedated by the bliss ball, she doesn't remember anything. However, as she gets up, she finds several notes throughout the house, which instruct her on how to remove the bliss balls from her back. Turns out that she wrote the instructions herself, as she is used to getting apprehended by the authorities. Doing as told, she performs an incision and removes the ball, leaving the house a bloody mess. She then goes to meet her mother. It's revealed that Alex's mother has been sent into a state of permanent bliss as punishment for going against the wellness, which explains the former's hatred towards the organization. When Jamie and Pip return home, they find Alex missing. Upon seeing blood everywhere, they assume the worst and begin to panic. After collecting themselves, they quickly get in their truck and head out to look for her. Out of nowhere, someone appears before their truck, and they unintentionally knock the person over. Fearing the worst, they assume that they just killed Alex. But to their relief, Alex appears from another direction, confirming that they ran someone else over. To their horror, they learn that it is a man. The girls are shocked by the revelation, as they were previously told that all men were wiped off from the earth. Thinking that they just killed the last man on earth, they start panicking, but just then, the man regains consciousness. However, he is severely injured, so the girls rush him into a barn. There, the girls get into a minor argument, and Pip suggests they should immediately hand over the man to wellness, but Alex strongly opposes it. According to her, the man should be treated in the barn itself. After a lot of convincing, Pip eventually gives in, and the girls start treating the man. After a lot of time and effort, the surgery is successful, and the girls fall asleep in the barn, tired. The next day, when the girls wake up, they notice Lane's assistant, Michelle's car, pulling up in their driveway. Pip again insists on telling Michelle about the man, but Jamie convinces her against it, as it could jeopardize her chances of becoming a mother again. It is revealed that Jamie dearly misses her late husband and son. She feels that she can fill that void by having another baby. Meanwhile, Michelle has approached the trio to check the living conditions of the place. She interviews Jamie and Pip to see if they are fit to welcome a baby into their home. Meanwhile, Alex wakes up and starts going through the man's backpack. She learns that his name is Bobby, and he has a newspaper clipping of an article about her mother, who is a former biochemist. Bobby suddenly wakes up and tries to run away, but Alex stops him and a struggle follows. Unfortunately, Michelle hears the commotion and insists on inspecting the barn. Jamie and Pip try to persuade her against going there, but Michelle is adamant. Fortunately, when she reaches there, Alex has already brought the situation under control. Later, Jamie is informed that she didn't make it to the next stage of the wellness program, much to her dismay. She breaks down and calls Pip. The latter calms her down and promises to be by her side after work. Later, Pip approaches Lane and asks her 
if there has been any mix-up regarding her friend's candidacy. However, this just enrages Lane, who accuses Pip of questioning the wellness's selection methods. Elsewhere, Alex questions Bobby about the newspaper article, and when he refuses to speak, she proceeds to inject the bliss ball into his body. However, she can't bring herself to go through with the process, after a horrible memory of her mother being injected with the same substance. In a fit of rage, Alex destroys the pill. It's then revealed that the wellness organization put a permanent pill in her mother's body after the old woman claimed to have seen some male survivors. Meanwhile, Bobby sympathizes with Alex and claims that there are more male survivors and they are being hunted. In the next scene, Jamie goes to the official gynecologist of wellness, Dr. Harvey, to see if she got rejected due to some medical reasons. To her disbelief, Dr. Harvey reveals that she had in fact approved Jamie for the next stage. Desperate for a baby, Jamie goes to Bobby to get his sperm, but she ends up breaking down in front of him. Soon, Pip arrives and sends Jamie back home, promising to help her. Moments later, she emerges from the barn with Bobby's sperm and hands it to Jamie. The next day, Jamie meets a woman at a store who is also rejected by wellness and is able to resonate with her. Meanwhile, Pip again hounds Bobby for his sperm to make sure that Jamie has abundant sperm to get pregnant. As part of a bargain, she lets him shower under her supervision, which ends up arousing her. Later, Alex offers Bobby drinks in order to win his trust and make him open up about wellness. However, she ends up getting drunk and Bobby uses this opportunity to free himself and run away. Sadly, he is not able to get far because of his injury and he's forced to return. He then shows a half-conscious Alex a SIM card that he says could lead them to a place where other survivors have been kept. At night, Jamie keeps thinking about the woman from the bakery, so she decides to anonymously give her Bobby's sperm. The next day, Jamie finds Pip lurking around the barn and figures out that she fancies Bobby. Pip denies being attracted to Bobby, but Jamie refuses to believe her. Meanwhile, Alex eventually finds a phone and when she turns it on with Bobby's sim, they find a message from an unknown number saying, Rise. At work, Pip notices the sperm recipient woman being pilled. Turns out that the wellness have gotten wind of a living man, so they are vigorously searching for him. Alarmed, she informs Jamie and the others about the development. She then sneaks out of work and joins them at the farm. The organization eventually traces the sperm back to the farm and sends police for a raid. While hiding behind the barn, Alex holds Jamie responsible for the situation and decries not being able to return back to the farm, which belonged to her late brother, Jackson. Suddenly, Bobby's phone rings and a man from the other end shares an address with him. Elsewhere, an unknown woman is seen, intercepting their conversation. The group decides to hide at the site where Jackson and other sick men were burned to death to contain the plague. There, the unknown woman finds them and starts chasing them with a dart gun, forcing the group to flee in their car. Bobby reveals that the woman is a hunter and she killed his friend two weeks ago. While trying to get rid of the hunter, the group gets stuck in the festivities of Sinkfest, a festival that celebrates menstruation. With no other choice but to participate, Bobby disguises himself as the festival's mascot. Soon, Lane and the hunter also arrive at the festival and the group gets separated in the crowd. Amidst the chaos, Jamie vomits and realizes that she has gotten pregnant. Meanwhile, Pip is spotted by Lane and the latter asks her about Bobby. Bobby. She offers to forgive her friends and give her a seat at the wellness committee in exchange for the information. Meanwhile, Alex and Bobby notice the former's mother in the wellness crowd and walk up to her. However, they are quickly spotted by Hunter, prompting Bobby to run and causing Alex's mother to panic. Alex calms her mother down before leaving to join Jamie. Soon, Pip also joins the girls and tries to talk to them about Lane's offer, but they all drag her along to the Reflection Labyrinth, where Bobby has taken refuge from Hunter. However, the labyrinth is extremely confusing, and Hunter manages to sedate Bobby and leave with him in her truck. Fortunately, Jamie manages to get on the back of her truck without being noticed. She follows Hunter and Bobby into a secret base and manages to sedate her with one of her own darts. With this, Jamie Jamie safely rescues him from Hunter's place and informs him that she has gotten pregnant with his sperm. A while later, Alex and Pip also reunite with Jamie and Bobby. The group then starts heading towards the address. On their way there, Bobby suggests that he goes to meet the man alone and the women could join him later. This starts an argument and amid the chaos, they don't notice that Pip has driven them back to the wellness center. As a reward, Pip is taken to a luxurious room while Alex and Jamie are taken into custody. Alex eventually learns about Jamie's pregnancy and requests Lane to let her go. However, Lane tells her that Jamie will meet the same fate 
great as her mother. In the next scene, Pip is made to change into nice clothes and taken to the committee members' dinner. Bobby is also at the table, along with the wellness ladies, but with his hands tied. Pip tries to talk to him, but he is expectedly upset with her. However, Lane encourages them to kiss. This enrages Bobby, and he attacks Lane. Sadly, the other girls quickly overpower him and pin him on the dinner table. Lane then pulls his shirt up and instructs Pip to make love to him, as Alex's cop lover, Constance, watches it all transpire. When Pip hesitates, Lane gets angry and threatens to kick her out of the committee if she doesn't comply. Pip initially gets on top of Bobby, but seeing him so uncomfortable, she confronts Lane. She accuses her of trying to build a new world and placing herself at the top. Pip's resistance seems to move other girls, so Lane quickly orders Constance to take her into custody. She takes Pip to the operating room, where two nurses are gearing up to permanently send Alex and Jamie into a state of bliss. Constance tells the nurses to operate on Pip first, as per Lane's order. To Pip's surprise, when the nurses proceed to make preparations for the procedure, Constance sedates them. After waking up Alex and Jamie, Constance asks the girls to sedate her, so the organization wouldn't suspect her role in their escape, and Alex tearfully complies. After reaching a safe place, Alex expresses her anger towards Pip for betraying their trust. On the other hand, Pip breaks into tears and profusely apologizes for her mistake. The girls share an intense emotional moment and eventually forgive each other. The girls then arm themselves with farm tools and intercept Lane's car on her way to hand Bobby over to the government. They tase her and manage to free Bobby, but he refuses to come with them. An angry Bobby then expresses that he was much happier and free, all of those eight years when he wasn't around women. Meanwhile, Lane regains consciousness and holds Bobby at gunpoint. However, Alex swiftly jumps in front of Bobby, challenging Lane to shoot her before him. Jamie and Pip follow suit, and the girls eventually manage to sedate Lane again. The girls then realize that Bobby has taken off without them. Next, they notice a wellness car approaching them, so they quickly take cover in the bushes. Elsewhere, Bobby makes his way towards the address, which turns out to be an abandoned sports ground. Soon, the girls reunite with him there, much to his dismay. He feels that the surviving men won't accept him with the women around, so he tries to get rid of them, but Hunter arrives. As she explains that she is there to protect Bobby, all the exits to the building shut down, and a toxic gas is released. Hunter quickly opens an air duct and helps everyone climb it. However, before she can escape, she tells Alex that she's just like her mother and starts losing consciousness. Taken aback, Alex notices her mother's tattoo in the woman's hand. The gas then engulfs the room, and the group is forced to continue. They crawl their way through the duct, but it keeps getting narrower, and they eventually get stuck. With the gas fast approaching them from behind, the group starts shaking violently until the duct gives way, and they fall down. To their horror, they find themselves in a room where a group of naked men are being milked for their sperm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Lane and Dr. Harby appear, and it's revealed that they are stockpiling fresh sperm, so when the government runs out of supplies of pre-virus sperm, they could control the population, the country, and possibly the world. The episode ends as Jackson appears out of nowhere, and Lane reveals that he's the architect of all of this, much to Alex and Jamie's shock and horror. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.